Now Christmas is coming, it's time to find some really good stocking fillers. Now is this one of those? Stay tuned to find out if this bargain basement kit is definitely one you want to be shoving in your stocking. Hi, and welcome to RC Kicks. On today's show, something very different for you. A whole new manufacturer to the channel, and that is Camtech Model Sport. Now, this is a small UK, UK company based down in Bognor Regis, which is right on the south coast of the UK, if you're not from the UK. Now, I was uh, looking, I was introduced to the company, and I was looking around their website, and then I found this, and I was, I, I looked at all the pictures, and I, I it could, didn't make sense because it was only £59.99 for a whole car. That's including tyres, rims, uh, Laxan body for £59.99. To put that into context, my Phantom Corsio, a set of rims and tyres, front and rear, is almost the same price as this whole kit. So being that Christmas is coming, I thought, well, this could make a really good stocking filler, but is it too good to be true? So I placed my order, bought it with my own money, and it arrived last night. So I thought, well, we'll do a bit of an unboxing, we'll have a look around it, and then uh, it looks to be quite a simple uh, build, so it shouldn't take me too long, so I'm gonna also build it. Um, right, let's open the box, take a look, and see, is it too good to be true, or is it a total gem? So it's called a hot rod kit. They do quite a few different cars and they do bangers and things like that. But uh, I saw this and I, I kind of like this style. I'm not really a banger body kind of fan, but this one, being that it's not that much different to my Corsio Phantom, apart from being two wheel drive, uh, I thought, yeah, why not? So what do you get? Well, the box is quite small, little tiny box. Uh, delivery to the UK again was only a few pounds. I think it was like three or four pound. Um, so yeah, total bargain. So you get a manual, just a little printed manual. Now I'm pretty sure this is a very small company. Uh, and then what else do you get in here? Now I don't quite understand how it's the, lay the layout of the packets, whether it's like Schumacher, the way that it, it goes on, or whether you just lay everything out. I honestly don't know. I haven't read the instructions or anything yet. So the little tires. Four, four spoke sort of traditional tires. Like I said before, you can actually choose different tires. Even for this low money, you still get to pick different bodies and different wheels. I went with the exact stock kit so that you basically see what you get if you don't choose anything else. I'll put a link to their website down below. Um, oh my God, you get bearings. And they're actually priced, the 399 and 250. So Tamiya, we need to have a chat about charging 150 to 200 odd pound more for kits with no bearings when I can buy a kit for 59.99 that comes with bearings. Ugh. A little chassis. I mean, from a quality point of view, it, it kind of sits from what I can see along with uh, Schumacher's. It, it feels kind of along that sort of, um, quality level. Well, obviously we know Schumacher's are not 59.99. Everything's bagged up properly. It's not all just slung in the box. What have we got here? The, so we've actually got a branded part, which I guess is the rear, the rear section. I mean, I don't know if it's 3D printed or not, but it's hard to tell. So from a quality point of view, it doesn't look like it came out of a low quality 3D printer. Um, so yeah, looking really good. Body posts, <coughs> axle stubs. See the quality of this stuff looks fine. It's not, 
it doesn't look like it was made in someone's garage on a 3D printer that's really low quality. Upright, there's a belt there. Rear axle. See, it's all, it's all machined well. It doesn't feel more bearings. Arms, dinky little arms. Servo saver. Servo saver for $59.99. And a few other little bits and pieces. So looking at this, it looks like you can also purchase these parts separately because they're, they're in individual bags and they've got like prices on them. So I guess if you break the car, you contact them and say, can I please have that? And you know it's £2.49. And that's pretty much it for the body. Let's take a look. I will do a montage in a bit so you can get a close up look. But first inspection. Let's have a look at the body. What do you get? No screws I'm losing. Fiesta Mark 7. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. You get window masks, it's quite nice. You, there's no decals with this, you basically have to choose your own stuff. I don't know if they sell um, decals on their website or not. I'll actually, uh, <coughs> if they do, I'll put a picture up here showing the decals that they offer. And then there's a rear wing. Palmer 2L wing, so you can put, you can put a bit of a monster wing on it if you want. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, blown away really uh, from that point of view. Um, obviously, I'm going to put it together and then I'll be able to give you a better review of fit and finish. And then we can blast it around and see what that's like. So what we're going to do now, I'm going to cut to a montage so you can have a good look at the quality of the parts. And uh, after that, we will uh, start building it. Well, I think you can agree with me on the quality of the kit looks perfectly acceptable and uh, yeah, good engineering. There's no rough edges, no low quality 3D printing or anything. Obviously, this is quite a simple car, but uh, if you rebranded it to a bigger company, I don't think you would even notice. Right, let's start on page two. Now, being that it's a manufacturer I've never built cars for, it does take a little bit of time to kind of figure out how they want you to build it. It's like building Schumacher versus Tamiya and Kurosho. They're all slightly different in their own way. And obviously if you build kits a lot from one manufacturer, it can be a bit jarring and a bit strange to then jump to another one. The more different manufacturers I work with, the more I kind of get used to that feeling of changing. Right, so it's telling me to get the chassis and then we've got to start putting in some little mounts, which is spacer times four and then the rods, which is CSK M3 X24 times four. Right, wish me luck. I don't think this is going to take too long to build. Now it goes completely against the whole point of a budget kit, but I would love to see a carbon fiber upgrade for the chassis and top plates and battery mounts. It would look super bling. Uh, it wouldn't be that expensive, I would think. If you are building one of these kits, don't forget the little spacer under the arm that you can see now. I missed these out and they weren't in the instructions that came with the kit. This, I guess, lowers the ride height. 
As you can see on the top of the springs, there is a washer before the clip. This wasn't in the manual and I couldn't see it in the photographs on the website because their wheels covered that area. Another upgrade that would be really good for this would be a rear diff. It would be nice if you could adjust the offset of the wheels so that you could dial them into the body that you fit on this chassis. I do like these classic wheel design and the quality of them is fantastic. And there you go, an hour and a half later, and it's all done. Now, what did I find? Well, the positives first. The positives are this. Build quality is great. I have no qualms about the quality of materials and the machining precision. All the holes lined up exactly as they should. There's no having to drill out any holes because they are not the correct bore size, none of it. Everything goes together exactly as it should. Especially when you think what you are paying for this kit, it blows me away. How they can actually make any profit off of a kit like this, I have no idea. So that was a real plus from, from my point of view. And uh, that's one thing that's really hard to improve on when you're working to a price point, and they've done it. So uh, I just blown away by that. Now, what's the downsides? Well, there isn't lots, but there is a few. So let's cover some of them now. The main challenge with this kit is the manual. The manual itself is very poor for setting this kit up. Now, the manual that actually came with it is for the 1300 Saloon Stock Car Assembly Instructions. And then there's written on it, uh, please use as build guide only, very similar to Hot Rod Build. So what they've done is actually put a different car manual in this one. Now you can imagine that if you've got 10 cars, you're having to write 10 different manuals and it takes a long time to write manuals. I know because I used to write manuals. Um, but this car has got things that are very different, especially around the front. Um, so there's a few mistakes that I made that I wasn't sure of and then I had bits left over and it wasn't in the manual So what I found was I jumped on their website and looked at their photographs in the sales section And I kind of figured it out from there There's a bit of guessing going on and that kind of made things a little bit different um, Another challenge is it doesn't actually Give you a key to the size of the screw or anything like that how Tamiya and Kosho do it It just tells you that you need to fit a um, uh, M340 so you need to get your calipers out and measure up all the bolts um, So that can be a bit time-consuming where it'd be nice to be able to just put it on the the manual And you know, that's the right length to use because there is quite a lot of bolts that are slightly different lengths So it's not that obvious um, But apart from that that was you know, this is something that could be improved. I'd rather have the quality of production and then uh, work on the manual afterwards. But it's something to be um, aware of. But hopefully this video, with all the close-up shots that I've just you've just seen, that you can come back and reference those. So I think that would help. Where I didn't have that, I had to do it as I was going along. Um, the next thing is if, depending on what kind of battery you're gonna run. Now I wanted to do this as a cheap, uh, hobby grade uh, RC so I've put in electronics to match that so I fitted a Tamiya sports tune motor a TBL EO2 uh, S electronic speed controller and a cheap uh, Carson servo and a fly sky receiver um, links to all these electronics will be in the description but that's trying to keep the price as low as possible. The other thing was that I wanted to use a shorty battery, but the batteries that fit into this chassis by default, which are 4.4 volts, four cells, I don't have any, I don't use them. Uh, I also double checked and the TBL EO2 doesn't run on 4.4 volts. So you would then need to have a different electronic speed controller and then you would have to purchase a battery at the time. Now, if you're paying $59.99 for this and you've got to buy a dedicated battery, you know, it's another 20 odd pound. 
But if you have a battery already, then obviously it doesn't cost you any more because you've already outlaid. And that's exactly what happened with me. I've got a shorty battery and that runs perfectly with a TBL02 um, electronic speed controller. And it's plenty of power that then goes to my uh, sports tune motor. So how did I manage to get it in the car if I said it doesn't fit? Well, I modified the chassis and added two more holes and brought the battery mount back in the chassis. Now, when it's, it's machined out, these two bolts you see on this side are the brackets for the battery on one side. On the other side, they're further in. So I had plenty of space to extend them out. Now, I think this is what should be done in the manufacturing process that you have the options. Now, I'm guessing you're not allowed to put a, um, a battery like this in this car if you're gonna run in a certain class, but I kind of think that this is a brilliant little kit that you can get into for very little money to have lots of fun just out on the street. So you might have a shorty battery because you run it in one of all your other cars. Um, and you you know you don't want to go buying dedicated batteries and then you have a problem that it doesn't fit in your electronic speed controller because the voltage is too low so you have to do something else and you want to make it as easy as possible so with a little bit of modifications basically a hand drill and a couple of drill bits I just did two more holes um, and then I've made it so that I can fit my uh, shorty pack into it and it fits perfectly so I've got all the power I need I could run this for ages because it's running all that power on a little tiny sports tune motor and i've used very cheap electronics so that's something don't let it put it off put you off because all you have to do is take the top battery mount lay it down move it back put two holes you can use that as the template and that's where the holes go and then you just drill it you can even use the original um, rubber um, battery gasket it stretches and you would never know the difference so uh, I can highly recommend it um, from that point of view. Or you can specify a battery and an electronic separately. But that kind of defeats the whole point of this car. Right, there we go. I've waffled on enough about that. Um, what other issues did I have? Um, you've got to drill out the servo saver. But it is a proper servo saver that you get in the kit. You don't just get a arm. Um, you've got to drill those out a little bit to get the ball joints on. That was something else. So you will need your drill twice to do that modification and that. Um, apart from that, everything went together fine. Obviously, you've got to supply your own pinion and your own motor. Now, you don't need to go sticking stupidly fast motors in these. There's no point. A sports tuned is good enough, and that's what I had lying around. So I had all these electronics lying around already. Um, what else? Right, okay, so we're now going to move on to the body. Now, I'm going to do this very simple. Um, I'm just going to pick a color, and then I'll cut it out, and then we'll paint it up. I'm not going to put the wing on it. I'm just going to leave it as the car. Um, and then I'll have to dig out some random stickers. Right, let's cut it out, make it, line it all up and uh, keep going. Now the body's all cut out and I've mounted it on the car and everything lines up as it should. I still have to sand round all the edges and then scour the body, put the window marks in after giving it a good clean. Not too difficult. The only thing I would watch out if you're going with this body is the back two pins that go through. There's two little dimples on the polycarbonate body or Lexan, Lexan this one. Um, don't use them. Do your own ones. They're a little bit too far apart, those two dimples for this kit. So you have to kind of bring them in a little bit. So I wouldn't just trust them. I would definitely eyeball them up yourself. The front ones I found it's almost just into this V at the front and that gave me the perfect alignment. So let's crack on, sand the edges, get the window mask in and then we're going to paint it. And I still haven't decided what colour I'm going to paint it so I'll uh, think of that while I'm now prepping it up for paint. So it's all cleaned, ready to go. I put the window masks in and I sanded round all the edges just to smooth it off a little bit. Uh, window masks, material is great for window mask material, but the cutting out, the shapes are completely nothing to match the windows. None of them really lined up well. I had to go back and actually modify it a little bit myself and then bend it to try and make it fit. So uh, yeah, they need a little bit of love. Also, there's two for the um, headlights. I couldn't get them to line up at all, so I didn't even bother with them. I'm gonna leave them out, um, which is a bit of a shame really, because the material that it's actually printed on 
is really forgiving for moving and taking off and putting on again. So I do like this material. Also, it's kind of see-through a bit, so it helps to really understand where you're placing it. So uh, big fan of the material, but uh, needs to be matched to the body much better. I mean, you can see the white line across the top that I've had to go in and modify it a little bit um, and a bit over here where it just completely doesn't join up at all. Right, let's paint it. I've decided just to go with PS2 red. Just very simple, not metallic or anything. I'm just using red, mainly because I thought trying to stick to a budget and I don't want to use lots of expensive colors. So I'm using a flat color. I'm um, just going to blow it over completely. The idea is just to try and get something that looks pretty decent for as little money as possible. Right, wish me luck. Now there's lots of videos on YouTube as well as on RC Kicks on the details of how you paint up a Lexan body. But the golden rule is go slow, do lots of very light layers and take your time. Applying too little paint is not as bad as applying too much because you will get runs and smudges. Right, I've got to stop what I'm doing because I'm just rushing on. Once I get into it, I forget to actually stop and record stuff. Um, so what's happened so, since you've seen the last one? Well, I painted the body up um, for four coats of red and then two coats of white just to make it vibrant. Um, I then obviously you don't get decals with this body. So I was looking around at some random decals that I thought might work and I've ended up sort of sticking on the stadium blitzer being that it's red gray so I've started putting up I basically just used the blitzer word and I've done a um, stripe using the gray and I've cut it all out so that's kind of where I've got to so I'm just winging it at the moment um, and I'll take off the stuff I'm not happy with it's not brilliant obviously because I'm cutting this out they don't, they don't come pretty cut or anything um, but for this it's just a bit of fun and uh, I didn't want to go spending lots of money on new decals or anything. Um, I couldn't really find anything for a Mark Mark 7 uh, Fiesta anyway. Um, so yeah, I'll just make do with this. And it's coming along okay, I'm reasonably happy with it. Not too keen on this here. But uh, apart from that, I'm, I'm happy with this, laying this up. This at the moment is okay, I'm not so sure. I need to figure out some kind of lights or something. Right, let's keep going. Sorry, you're missing out on this stuff and I'm really getting into it. <laughs> you have a body with no decals. You can still make decals fit. What you use is a bit of masking tape, place it on the body, draw around the contours of it, then transfer the masking tape to your backing color. And that way you can cut it out and then fit it and it will look like it was cut to match the original body shape. Layering your decals will also give you a more professional finish. So layer the large color sections first, then put your lettering or writing on top. So there you go, all finished. I got a little bit carried away with the body, so I didn't really film a lot because I was just getting into it. it. Did take me a long time because I had to scratch build all the decals rummaging through my decal box. Uh, I managed to find in my parts bin this spoiler, so I modified that to get the angle with the rear window. Um, so I had to chop it around a little bit, but it's all bolted up and it's fine. It's all adjustable and everything as well. Um, it, also, I found these wing mirrors that fit perfectly, so I just stuck those on as well. Um, and all the decals are just random stickers that I had in my sticker box. <coughs> so, what do you think? I mean, cheap as chips. $59.99, you can't go wrong really. I mean, you're talking less than grasshopper money. Um, you obviously need the same electronics inside as you would a grasshopper. So you're looking at what, TBLE um, electronic speed controllers, what, 15 pound, a servo's eight pound, um, a sports tune motor is what, 15 pound, something like that. And then the Fly Sky remote is what, 35 pound. So you can get yourself a pretty cool looking car for very little money spoiler i think it's about eight pound from china yeah and then you can go crazy you don't have to have this body you have lots of different bodies as well as well as the wheels can be different colors and things like that so there you go a brilliant little stocking uh, filler for Christmas and uh, I'm blown away by the quality now i plan to take it out driving yesterday was a lovely sunny day today it's absolutely pouring it down so i can't do a running video so there's 
so many running videos I'm trying to do at the moment. This needs to uh, have a running video. So does the Phantom. I need to take them both out, so I'll do that soon. Now, if you'd like to follow along live with my builds, I post every single day on my Patreon page. I post pictures as I'm going through my builds and what I'm doing that day, whether I'm out trailing. So if you'd like more content from RC Kicks, go sign up for RC Kicks Patreon page because there's tons more content there from me. Thanks very much. See you on the next one. Bye-bye. Check out one of these videos for some more RC fun.